Quantum mechanics is weird. Concepts like superposition, entanglement and decoherence are hard to imagine. But it gets easier if we use an everyday analogy. And we don't have to kill cats. A wise man once said, if you think you understand quantum mechanics, you don't understand quantum mechanics. Well, if you don't understand quantum mechanics, I hope you understand football so I can explain it to you. But if you don't, don't worry. As another wise man once said, football is a simple game. 22 men chase a ball for 90 minutes and at the end the Germans always win. Well, that's all you have to know. I will explain some concepts of quantum mechanics using an imaginary football match between FC Copenhagen and the Everett Rovers as an analogy for a double slit experiment. What is a double slit experiment again? A laser sends photons, light wave packets, one by one through two slits and they end up at a screen. The slits diverge the light waves, so naively we expect to see a blur at the screen. But instead we see a so-called interference pattern. This happens because each photon passes through both slits at the same time in the form of waves. And both waves interfere with each other to form this beautiful pattern. I just said something weird. I said that the photon is moving through two slits at the same time. Now this is something that's hard to imagine. We are not familiar with objects having a property that can have two values at the same time. Yet, in the world of quantum mechanics, this is quite common. We say that the photon is in a superposition of waves. How can we imagine this? We don't have something similar in our everyday life, do we? Actually, we do. Let's now look at the analogy of the football match. It's actually a really nice match. Players make the most beautiful dribbles, slide tackles and attacks on the field. But after a few hours, the crowd starts to wonder who has won the game. But the game only results in a win once it has ended. And there is no referee to end the match and to decide on the result. While the match is underway, there is no result yet, obviously. But we can make a prediction of what the result will be. Now, let's, to be safe, predict that the Everett Rovers or FC Copenhagen will win. We can then say that the prediction is a superposition of both results. You might say, ah, but that's something entirely different. A prediction says something out about the future, not the present. That is true, but the prediction itself is in the present. And that's how predictions are used by bookmakers, stockbrokers and weathermen. Back to the slits. Physicists were curious, did the photon really go through both slits? What if they would add a detector to one of the slits? Well, they did, and it detected 50% of the photons. So it appears that 50% of the photons go through one slit and 50% through the other. But when we look at the screen, the interference pattern has disappeared and only a blur remained. So the character of the photon changes in the presence of a detector. Let's now see why this is the case. The crowd wants the match to have a result, so we add a referee. The referee will blow its whistle after 90 minutes and decide who has won. He acts as a sort of detector. We now know that eventually there will be a result, so we can add probabilities to our prediction. Let's say that the chance of winning is 60% for Copenhagen and 40% for the Everett Rovers. But the referee really likes his whistle, and for that reason the character of the game changes. At every tackle or attack, the referee calls for a foul and influences the match. The harmony of the match is gone. The flip side of the coin is that we will get a result eventually. The referee somehow decides who won in line with the probabilities of the prediction. So if the match is played 100 times, then Copenhagen will win about 60 times. So in order to get a result, we need a referee. But the prize is that the referee influences the match. In quantum terms, we say the referee gets entangled with the match. 
As we saw, because of the presence of a referee, the game loses its harmony. We say that it decoheres. Let's look at the double slit experiment with the detector again. What's important to know is that you can't simply point a detector at a slit and expect it to detect the photons that pass through. You can't see a photon flying by. So the detector needs to interact somehow with the photon. It needs to get entangled with the wave of the photon. But this entanglement interaction affects the wave. It will go out of sync with the other wave. It decoheres. So the interference pattern disappears. And what we are left with is a quasi-random distribution in accordance with the probabilities. In short, a blur. Such a detector is called a which way detector, since it appears to detect through which slit the photon passed. Often people think that the photon passed only through that slit, but that's a misconception. That's a classical way of thinking that gets in the way. In fact, the photon still passes through both slits, even though it can be detected only at one slit. We can now understand this with the help of the match. Even with a referee, both teams have a chance of winning until the final whistle. So the result is not fixed during the match, except if the referee does not play by the rules and there is match fixing. Let me know in the comments what you think of this analogy and if it helps you understand these concepts better. And of course, like and subscribe if you want more of these videos. There's one big mystery left. How does the referee decide on the result? We know that the presence of the referee makes sure that there will be a result and we know what the probabilities are. But how does this referee turn these probabilities into an actual result? Or in quantum terms, how does the chance of being detected turn into a detection or no detection? Well, no one knows. This is part of the measurement problem. There are many interpretations of quantum mechanics that try to solve this problem, but there is no consensus. Some think that the referee throws a coin to decide who won. This is called the Copenhagen interpretation. Some think the crowd splits and both crowds experience a different result. This is called the effort or many worlds interpretation. Some think the always friendly crowd persuades the referee to end the match and even to decide on the result. This is called conscious causes collapse. And there are many more interpretations. I will talk more about these in my upcoming videos. Oh, one more thing. I didn't tell you who won the match. Oh, never mind, I did. Always the Germans. Thanks for watching.